What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about several different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about I Know What You Did Last Summer, The Strangers, In a Violent Nature, and Aliens Romulus or Alien Romulus. Now starting off here with I Know What You Did Last Summer, Freddie Prinze Jr. gave an update on his status for the film. Uh, speaking with US Weekly, he said, nothing's a lock until there's ink on paper until the contract's signed, but I'm definitely talking to them. And if we can make everything work, and I know they wanna make everything work, I know I wanna make everything work, then we'll try and make it work. But we gotta make sure everyone's schedules fit. Everybody has to be happy with the script. I know Jen Robinson, and I like Jen Robinson very much as a director and as a person. I think people like her are the future of this business, so there's a lot of good things that make me want to do the movie. I'm motivated. I know they're motivated. I know both sides are trying to make it work, and hopefully we do. Yeah, so hopefully they can work something out so Junior, Freddy, can return as Ray. But Screen Rant gave us a lot more interesting tidbits, and it was just like a brief little comment. I don't even know how true this is or if they're going off of, off of their own gut feeling. Screen Rant covered this report and also mentioned this bombshell inclusion. The film is a continuation to the original and ignores previous sequels. Now, see, if they had just said it ignores the previous sequel, everyone would likely assume they're talking about I'll always know, but it said sequels. So that's indicating you're ignoring that terrible third one and the one that people do actually favor as a sequel, even though I argue that one is lesser in quality than the original, which means that the chances of Brandy returning have now plummeted. And I don't see this as the biggest shock, considering that the rumored plot details put more emphasis on that first movie and how what happened with Ben Willis is a cautionary tale in Southport now. But again, the fact that it's plummeting Brandy's chances of returning, I know, is not something that everyone is excited about. Production is supposed to start next month in L.A., according to the Cinemaholic, so I'm sure we'll learn more about this shortly to get confirmation on Brandy's return or not. Now we're going to dive into the Strangers trilogy. So... I guess this film had its home media release recently and it's confirmed that a pretty big or it's confirmed a pretty big detail for the rest of this trilogy. Apparently that opening victim who got chased in the woods is an important piece and I quote possibly the piece to this story according to Madeline Pesh. What's funny about this is Rennie Harlan's reality show already revealed that we would be getting flashbacks and some people who saw the episode spotted the opening victim and didn't waste time reaching out to me about it so i guess that's some context for you guys apparently how we will learn more about this person is through flashbacks that you can expect in the later entries what do you guys make what do you guys think makes this character so important i think his name was jeff seemed like a nobody to me but i guess there's some sort of importance to jeff's and his minuscule role that we got at the start of the first film. I guess we're gonna learn that he could possibly be t the person we're supposed to learn more about. What was her name? Tamara. We're supposed to learn more about Tamara. Could this be Tamara's ex-boyfriend or something? Is this person someone who knows this mythical Tamara? We'll just have to wait and see what The Strangers Chapter 2 and 3 will offer to us. I myself am gonna be as open-minded as I can, but I'm also not gonna be excited for it, just going off of what we saw in that first film. Now. We're going to talk about In a Violent Nature. So In a Violent Nature 2 is on the way and Chris Nash will return to write. No word on if he will be back to direct. But if you're someone like me and thought that this was the equivalent of being invited over to play a game, but the person who invited you just hogs the controller the entire time, then you are not excited for In a Violent Nature 2. They need to eliminate the POV aspect or work it into the story better by reducing it so we can spend time with the characters. I'm not saying Friday the 13th, which is the film it was seemingly trying to emulate along with other slashers from that era. They didn't give us the most profound and in-depth leading characters all the time. No, there were obviously a lot of characters that were just there for the body count. But the fact still remains, we spent a lot of time, well, not a lot, but we still had time spent with these characters before they ended up dying. And a lot of them had an opportunity to showcase a personality that won you over, wanted you to root for their survival. And then of course, others were just part of the body count. In a violent nature, just spent way too much time on Johnny and him wandering in the woods. Yes, I get that was the intent for us to be showing the story from the perspective of the antagonist. The way they executed though, was not effective. It, you, when you're making a movie, 
just as much as when I'm reading a book or anything that involves a story being told. If you're gonna have characters, I feel it is very important for those characters to have some sort of connection with the person watching. If you can't connect with the character, then what is the point? And then the, here's the problem. The way the story unfolds and the fact that it's just Johnny wandering, if this were a novel and it's highlighting all the things Johnny is doing, it would read better. But when you just take that and put it to screen and it's just a man wandering, walking, kill this, kill that, the, the novelty of it wears off. We need to spend more time with those characters. I hope they find a nice balance of that in the sequel. Uh, I, I can't wait to see, I guess, who... Well, I'm not going to say I can't wait because I'm not looking forward to it. Well, I guess we'll see who ends up picking up this locket that makes Johnny start walking again in the next film, but whatever. Now we're going to talk about some more rumored plot details for Alien Romulus. So if you do not want any potential spoilers, you should stop listening right now. But this comes from the Alien Covenant site who has been, again, like journaling some of the potential things that are going to unfold in the film and how this could connect even further to the first film. And the Nostromo event that happened with Ripley and her crew. So the characters find out that the Wayland Utani recovered the alien from the end of the first film. The one that I guess you could say was the antagonist of that film anyway. It was only one. They recovered that alien floating through space, that xenomorph, and brought it to the research station where they reverse engineered its DNA, extracted the black goo material, and used it to create their own xenomorphs. Now, something happened. And the station was swarmed with xenomorphs. And then this user also goes on to mention, according to audition tapes from February 2023, one of the characters named Bajorn is the one who discovers the Wayland yutani station and talks to the two other characters, Rain and Android Andy. I think Rain again is played by Kaylee Spaney. But they talk to those two about the discovery. They go on to question, did he find it by accident, a distress signal, or is the Wayland company pulling the strings? Now... I guess we'll find out more when the film comes out. We did also get these cool new posters today. They look badass. I'm looking forward to finishing my marathon of the Alien films. I'm going to try to watch Alien 3 tonight. And I already have a bad taste in my mouth just from memory of why I did not proceed to watch anymore. Because of I, I thought at the time of my age, they did Ripley bad in 3. So I was just turned off from watching anymore. But I'll let you know what I think about Alien 3 when I watch it tonight. Actually, the last thing we're going to talk about here is going to be related to Scream 7 because there was an update that just came out courtesy of Entertainment Tonight. So we're going to talk about Scream 7 and shout out to UK for sending this my way. So Nev Campbell did confirm what we've all known for months without an official statement from anyone involved with the project. But now Nev herself has come out and confirmed the plot of Scream 7. And that is that it's going to be following Sydney. Adding that the she added that the idea is in the same vein as Jamie Lee Curtis, highly publicized return to the role of Laurie Strode in the Halloween franchise 40 years after the original. Campbell also stated they did pitch the concept to me, and it's the reason that I jumped on board. After after admitting she has not received a final script just yet, but is hoping to receive it this week. So that kind of backs up what I've been saying months in the past when the first shot of her confirming her return came out in which I was saying the script isn't ready. And that's what I had been hearing. I did also recently then hear shortly after that something of a script was ready. Then that got clarified to be just a draft. And I guess now they're going to have the final draft ready shortly because i have heard that the final draft is still a work in progress and now nev campbell herself has come out and confirmed that she went on to also say i love these movies they are so much fun to be a part of i'm so grateful for them i could never have imagined being a part of a movie that would have lasted this many decades the fandom is nuts they are incredible and very passionate about these films i'm excited to give them a new one now, if you're someone who saw the interview that she did with interview or entertainment tonight, she looked lovely as always. Um, hopefully, like I've been stating, all I want is for you to do something of substance with the character. I do not want us to be pivoting back to Sidney Prescott just because just because Spyglass botched what they had going on with the Carpenters. And I don't want you guys throwing together some weak story that is just like a PR stunt in the long run just to make yourselves look good. I would appreciate a story that Kevin Williamson and Nev Campbell have crafted that is beautiful and stays true to the character. And with everything that I have heard about how Nev herself is adamant on getting a quality story, that puts me at ease with 
with all of the concerns I have going into Scream 7. I'm still not someone who's overly excited for it, but I do know that Neve Campbell herself will give another tremendous performance back in the role as the iconic final girl that is Sydney Prescott. So let me know what you guys think about this confirmation from Neve Campbell down in the comment section below. Are you looking forward to Scream 7? Why or why not? If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe, turn on post notifications, so you can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.